here I am sad about an ex. What happened to me? I liked it better when I wasn't thinking about men. Reach. Ian, keep doing you. You're right. Ian who? I'm about work, I'm about career, and tomorrow I'm gonna introduce myself to the new department head and make her fall in love with me. The Foolishness of Career Women Harlem Episode 3 Welcome to Management Highlights Daily. Before we dive into some of the foolishness of Episode 3, I want to address why we break down these movies because some people in the comment section are saying don't take this seriously because it's entertainment, it's fake, etc. This brings me to the most popular book in the world according to the Guinness Book of Records, the Bible. The Bible is full of stories. Whether you believe them or not, there are valuable lessons to be learned from these stories. What have you done? Just like Harlem, even though it's scripted, acted out, and based on fictional characters, it says a lot about the times that we're living in today. Let's go back 40 years. 80s TV shows. When you look at the TV shows from 40 years ago, you will see a lot of family shows like The Cosby Shows, Family Ties, and Growing Pains family-oriented TV shows because families were pretty much intact back then and with one TV set in the house everybody was watching the same thing. That's why TV shows are made in such a way that people can identify with them. And in this case, Harlem has late 30s, early 40s single black women as its target audience. Shout out to the Patreon gang. Salute! The original video is gonna be on Patreon because we have to respect the YouTube guidelines. That's why you will get a censored and filtered YouTube friendly version. So if you like what we do and you want to experience our content to the fullest extent, support us on Patreon. This video contains a lot of spoilers, so you've been warned. Now it's time for us to dive into this and do what we have to do. Because we men and we. We men and we. On track for tenure. And yes, fine. Ian, being engaged was a surprise too. When you saw her at the party, did she look pregnant? No, why did you, you look ask fuck? that? Why else do people get married? Because they love each other? Oh, okay, that's worse. She's actually right. Marrying for love is worse. It's love and romance that's messing with our heads. People didn't marry for love. Love was not the foundation of marriage. Let's take a look at this article. Love and marriage. A history that challenges the notion of traditional marriage. Through most of human history, love was not at all the point of marriage, Kuhn said. Marriage was about getting families together, which was why there were so many controls. The notion that a couple would marry for love was considered almost antisocial, even subversive. Parents could disown their kids for doing it. Couples wed to make political alliances, to raise capital, to expand the workforce, and for a whole array of practical purposes. Keywords, practical and purposes. In other words, it made sense. Marriages don't last in modern society because it's based on romance, feelings. There's no need to stay together when the excitement, the tension of love and romance is gone. Why do you think women initiate 70 to 80 percent of divorces? Women are the emotional ones. God, I just want simple. I just want sweet. I have been looking for love, real love, for so long, and it has to be my turn. Universe, hear me manifest. Daniel is the one. Okay, <laughs> this is the one. Come on, God, work with me. Bring me Emmanuel. They are the hopeless romantics, even though they are not romantic at all. You see it in our breakdowns. It doesn't matter how strong and independent a woman is. At the end of the day, she expects a man to sweep her off her feet. She will not approach you. She will not ask you out on a date. She will not organize the date. She will not pay for the date, even though she makes her own money. She will not do that because in the fairy tale, she is the princess and the princess doesn't serve. The princess is pedestalized and worshipped. That's why it's such a turn off to see these women in their late 30s, early 40s acting like children, still chasing this fairy tale of marrying Prince Charming one day. The foolishness. One more thing from this article. 
too much love was thought to be a real threat to the institution of marriage. Well, marriage is at an all-time low and divorce is at an all-time high. And here we are in the manosphere explaining why getting married in modern times is foolishness. Let's take it a step further. I ended things with Ian so that I could focus on my career and that just blew up. Do you guys think if I went with him to Paris, that'd be me instead? Oh, honey, you cannot think that. Yes, you chose you. Men do that shit all the time with no regret. This is where the double standard kicks in and why it's hard to take modern women seriously. A man is expected to provide. And you know what? This episode proves this point. Let's go straight to it. Check this out. What's wrong? I met a guy who gets me. Like, really gets me. Oh my god, honey. This is amazing. You deserve a good guy. Okay, she met a guy that's just like her. Okay, next clip. Stay focused, guys. What's going on? I'll explain later. How are you here? Postmates, I brought you cookies. It's Fade. I can have a meet cute too. I feel like Kate Hudson. Ooh, Quinn, it's my poet from Uber. Okay, all lovey-dovey, meant to be, love and romance. We talked about it. Now check this out. Oh, can we get to your place now and fuck a dog? Oh, we're here. I know. <laughs> I mean, can we go up to your place and, you know, finish what we started? No, I mean, this is my place. You live in your car? Like you live in this car we've been riding around in all day? Like this is your home? Well, uh, poetry doesn't really pay. And I mean, you get it? We're artists. Jesus. We don't chase corn, we chase inspiration. Mm, sure, in theory, but no f that. An artist also needs to eat. We are not the same. I don't even have a car to live out of. Shit! I have to call that director. I am doing get out. I f***ed up. I can't do this. <laughs> this guy is just like her. Homeless. He sleeps in his car. She sleeps on her girlfriend's couch. He is a struggle artist and she is a struggle artist. She is flat broke and uses her girlfriend's money to get by. He is an Uber driver without an apartment. They are in the same boat, but guess who is expected to provide? This is female nature, guys. They will always look for security. That's why it's foolishness to compare women and men and say stuff like, men do it too. The difference between men and women is that men have to do it and women can choose to do it. Studies and surveys prove this. Check this out. This is from the US Census Bureau and the IFS. Link is in the description. Let's read. Even though women have made strides in education and professional work, a traditional gender pattern in mate preferences remains at large. You see? They want a traditional man, but they don't want to be a traditional woman. Let's read. A majority of never married women, 72%, say that it's very important for their future spouse to have a stable job according to the California survey. The share among single men is much lower, 46%. This preference for finding someone with a stable job remains strong even among single women who work full-time themselves, 74%. You see, women are not interested in being breadwinners. That's the foolishness we are highlighting in this video. Let's read and it doesn't vary much by education and income levels. Single men and women agree on most of the other qualities in an ideal spouse, such as being kind, caring, and responsible. Now let's take a look at this graph here. Gender full-time work and being single. For men, not working full-time means you're dismissed. Look at the gap between working full-time and not working full-time. Now for women, it doesn't matter if she's working full-time or not the numbers remain the same. We don't give a shit about your career. So Camille broke up with Ian to focus on her career and that's the new addition to the fairy tale, the career. Check this out. 
You know, and what I say is like the Cinderella story and what we're showing in our show is we need young girls to know you can ride up on your own white horse mm. and then your, your man need to ride up on his own white horse. Like that. But we don't need our sisters to be out there. You got to sit back and somebody got to rescue you. Now we're mm. doing our thing. And brothers are going to have to look at the paradigm shift. And that's exactly what you need to do. You have to ask yourself, what's in it for me? It's ironic because recently news came out that Megan Good's husband filed for divorce. This is a huge red flag. Why? Why? Like I've said before, women file 70 to 80% of the divorces. So why would a man file for divorce? Why would Devon Franklin choose to be part of that 20-30%? Why would a preacher choose to divorce his wife after 9 years of marriage? This is what I think. Megan Good is 40 years old and they have no children. Megan Good is the star of this show and when it comes to TV shows like this, actors and actresses sign deals for multiple seasons. So what happens? So with that being said, we're going to hold off on the baby making. We're going to hold off until we get that great job. Really career driven. She decided to hold off on the baby making because she is career driven. And at 40 years old, you're not in a good position to hold off on baby making. So the practical purpose of being married is not so practical anymore. It's not practical to stay married to a 40-year-old Megan Good who still focuses on her career even though she married a man who has a net worth of 10 million. Money is not the problem here. Let's take it a step further. Like I've said before, she probably signed a multiple season deal. And this is what happened in the first episode. Right then, when it seemed like the choice I made was exactly what I needed. That I was Masuo, taking what I want. He wanted something else. And the worst thing ever was staring me right in the face. You are a 40-year-old married woman, married to a preacher. This is not a good look, man. In a second season, they will take this to the next level. And I don't even know what's going to happen in the next episodes. Here I am sad about an ex. What happened to me? I liked it better when I wasn't thinking about men. Reach. Ian. Keep doing you. You're right. Ian who? I'm about work. I'm about career. And tomorrow I'm going to introduce myself to the new department head and make her fall in love with me. Like I've said before, these women are not making money to take care of you. They pursue these careers so they can feel better about themselves. We already talked about these useless degrees and student loan debt. So now Cinderella has a degree and a career. And now she feels entitled to a man that's on her level or higher, even though she doesn't provide any substance. Let's go to the next point. Check this out. It went, it went. Ow. <laughs> oh my God. It's Daniel. Remind me, Daniel? Daniel Wharton, entrepreneur. We talked about him last night, the guy from Prestige. Did you hear that? She leads with what he does. This is really important. Let's give another example from episode one. Who, who is it? Thank you for asking, Camille. His name is Corey, 32, mm. and a lawyer, mm. a working lawyer mm. at a real firm. I checked this time. Once again, she leads with what he's doing, and she's showing his picture because he has to look good, of course. The sisterhood has to approve. These women are not trying to impress us, okay? It's the sisterhood. We made a video called Women Explain Why They Hate Each Other. They compete with each other. They don't wear makeup for us. They weave. When you are dating a woman, you're not just dating her. You're dating the sisterhood. This next clip is important to watch in its entirety to understand what Camilla is going to say at the end of the clip. Let's go. Okay, I have never seen him before in real life, so I mean, how do I look? You look amazing. Hey, Daniel. Wow, you are even more beautiful than your pictures. Thank you, and you are the same man in yours. What? Did you think I was catfishing you or something? Yeah. No. Well, I think it's time for a face-to-face. -face. Are you free? Uh, yes. I mean, when? Tonight, 7 p.m. Uh, do you like... Uh, yes. I mean, I mean, what? Lobster. <laughs> yes. I love lobster. Great. I will see you tonight at 7. Cool, 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 cool. I'll text you the address. Okay. 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 Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> yes, he is real. He is real. Oh, my God. Yes, Quinn is back, bitches. Y'all better hurry up. I got a date. 
congrats. I mean, he did seem real. It's a sad day for society when all a man has to do is exist. Touche, my sister. The majority of men are invisible to her. When Brittany Renner was invited by Coach Prime, Dion Sanders, she was talking about blue checks in her DMs. In other words, verified users, notable public figures, celebrities. No blue check means invisible. Everything happens over the phone these days. So now you have worries about being catfished. Does this man exist? We all know that the dating pool only shrinks when women are looking for a man that makes six figures, is six feet tall and is good looking. And this next clip highlights something that is overlooked by many women. Ah, you must be Quinn. Tanja's expecting you. Please, come in. Oh, um, are, are, we, are we having dinner here? Yes, food is provided. Perfect timing, Quinn. We're just getting started. Help yourself to a lobster roll. Okay. Now what if I told you that in just one year, you could all own a Park Avenue penthouse? Well, when you sign up to be an herbal Vondekin sales rep, you are taking a step closer to that dream. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome, Daniel. Isn't this exciting, ladies? Oh my God, are you kidding me? A pyramid scheme? Does the date happen after this? Look at all these women. This is reality, fellas. Chad has options. High value men have options. And most women don't wanna compete. But they will focus on their careers and useless degrees and somehow they all deserve this man. So what is it that these women are offering that is worth committing to? We don't care about your degree. We don't care about your job or career. It doesn't make you more attractive in our eyes. We don't need your money because you expect us to have it ourselves. And when you finally accomplish your career goals, you probably hit the wall. Men are naturally attracted to younger women. So what is it gonna be? Um, if you make career sacrifices to be with your kids or your husband does or somebody does, um, you've gained so much in the health and well-being of your family, which is, in the end, the most important thing in life. Um, so, you know, you may earn less over a lifetime. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. Women do earn less over their lifetimes than men because they choose to, less, to work less. Um, but that doesn't mean they're the losers. It just means that they've made trade-offs and they've made decisions about putting the welfare of their kids first. And I think that's very admirable and I think we need more of it. Manosphere, we work in. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.